Welcome to chapter four, and in this chapter I'll be introducing you to the wonderful world of material creation. In the world of game development, materials are essential. They define the appearance of surfaces in your game, whether it's the reflective surface of a metallic robot, or the rough texture of a stone wall, or even the shimmering of a water surface, it's materials that really bring your 3D models to life. Materials determine how light interacts with the surfaces, how they reflect, refract, and even how they emit their own light. They're very much responsible for the visual aesthetics and realism in your game. Before we begin creating materials, we'll first take a look at the material editor window. And to do that, I'm just gonna open one of the materials from the start content. So if I just go into my content drawer, start content folders just here, so I'll open that up. And then there's a materials folder in there, we'll open that. And this lists all the materials that are already in the start content. We'll just start with the first one, which is M underscore asset platform, which we have been using. So I'll open that up and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see what's going on. This is the material editor interface. And as you can see, it shares some similarities with the static mesh editor and the blueprint editor that we've already looked at, but there are also some differences. As with the other editor windows, we have the menu bar up here at the top. And just below that, we have the toolbar, which contains important operations such as saving and applying changes and allowing the material previews to live update. Then in the top left over here, we have the viewport panel, which previews the material you're currently working on. And then the panel below that is the details panel, which we'll be using to change the properties of the material operations we'll be using. This big area in the middle is the material graph panel. And as you can see here, this panel contains different nodes which are connected up to create specific materials. In this case, you can see we have three constant nodes, which are basically just numbers which are connected to the base color, the metallic, and the roughness to create the material we can see in the viewport panel. Over here on the right, we have the palette panel, which may or may not be hidden. If you click on it, that will open it up. And this is a list of all the material nodes you can add to your material. Finally, at the bottom, we have the stats panel, which displays important information about the materials, such as the number of shader instructions being used, as well as any compiler errors. Okay, that about wraps it up for the quick tour of the material editor. In the next steps, we'll be creating a few different materials with varying properties, so join me in the next step to get started on creating your very own materials. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.